What are you doing? What? What are you doing? I'm looking for stuff for my model. So a while ago I was goofing around and opened up an old router that we had and looked at the circuitry and thought, huh, that kind of looks like it could be in a, a plane's cockpit. And to be honest, there are a bunch of little parts that could be turned into panels or all sorts of things. Anyway, I have tons of these P40 kits left over from a model building class I was teaching at the college, and I wanted to do a whole bunch of experimenting, and what better kit to use for experiments than one you don't really care about? So to get the little piece I wanted, I found that the easiest way for me was just to ruin my razor saw. It's really not ruined. And since the little circuit board is a little too thick, I went ahead and sanded it down too so it would fit nicely in the cockpit. See? Not bad. So, if you didn't know already, this is an extremely basic kit. You can see that I had already used this to experiment on. It was actually what I tested my Fokker streaking techniques on, but I cleaned those up. I didn't really think that Fokker streaking would be appropriate on an American plane in Chinese service. Oh yeah, I had drilled out the exhausts a while ago too. The kit comes with solid zigzag uh, plastic exhaust things, which really just wasn't good enough for me. I guess one thing about the plane being so basic is that you can really do some fun things with it if you just want to goof around and have fun. At the end I'll show you my favorite thing I've done with one of these kits. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Now, as you can plainly see, the interior of the cockpit is incredibly bare. Honestly, since the canopy only comes closed and the pilot is meant to be in there, it isn't a huge deal, but I really wanted to spice it up, so I stretched some copper wire to mimic ribbing. And to be honest, full disclosure, I'm not really following any reference photos or anything. I'm just winging it to add some visual interest. Now, I'm going to make a throttle doohickey with some tin foil and a teensy copper wire. I also thought I could use one of these number markers on the sprue for a panel or a circuit box or whatever, something. And now for the main event, the circuit board. And voila, ready for painting. Also, again, just so we're on the same page, this is clearly not what the interior of a P40 looks like. Really, I'm just attempting to add some visual interest and Let's be honest, for about 99% of the casual observers, nobody's going to notice. Anyway, I just wanted to let you all know that I wasn't trying to slip something by you, since if anyone will be able to pick out how something's wrong with the P-40's cockpit, it's model enthusiasts. So I decided to try to get the pilot to look as much like the box art as possible. Fun fact, the pilot who flew number 68 was Charles H. Older. Look him up, he's kind of cool. Anyway, I figured the pilot would probably be the most visible part of the cockpit, so I tried to make him look nice. Of course, it's also a good excuse for me to practice my figure painting, and really, the whole point of this model is for me to practice things and try things out. I think the little flag thing was called a blood chip. Anyway, it basically said that the pilot was an American fighting for the Chinese Nationalist Forces, not a Japanese pilot. So please return him to Kunming unharmed, rather than giving him a little vigilante justice. I just thought that was cool, so I wanted to represent the top of what I thought might be visible in the cockpit. Now I'm going to make the interior look a little less like painted garbage, and hopefully it will fool the uninitiated. Again, I'm not following any guide or reference, just trying to add visual interest.
And what do you think? It looks better than nothing. And I'll do the same thing to the instrument panel. And finally, we can start gluing this thing together. The fit isn't really that bad, but there is still a fair bit of sanding that needs to be done. And now for my next trick. I want to make the wheel wells look more realistic, so I'll mark out some excess plastic to cut out. Then I'll cut it out, both from the wing root and the frame. Then I'll cut a little strip off my old friend the beer can. Remember this from the KV2? And I'll make little circles to fit around the well. Oh yeah, I also wanted to make a headrest, or anti-whiplash cushion, or whatever, the, the thing that's behind the pilot. Anyway, the little number indicator looked just about right again for that, so I put that in place while the glue was drying on the aluminum wheel wells. I'm using copper wires again to mimic the ribbing inside the wheel wells. I like copper wire because it's fairly bendy, but also stiff enough to hold its shape well, and best of all, I find it all over the place in garbage dumps in the desert, so it's free. Now that the glue is set on the beer can, I'll trim the excess. I start by ruining a blade on the hobby knife, which sort of worked okay, but I found that it's better to actually trim it down with some tiny scissors first, then use the hobby knife to trim off the excess. So there was a part to fit the intake under the propeller, but it looks really cheesy, so I decided to make my own using this nameplate on the sprue. I also made an artistic choice to make three bars instead of the historically accurate two, since I thought it looked more like teeth. Again, I apologize to all the purists. There's also this big cylinder thing on top of the nose that I think is another intake or something. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. Anyway, it's supposed to be more, well, cylindrical, and it's supposed to be hollow, so I will fix that right up. Look at me being all accurate now. Okay, so I like to mask the cockpit. It's really nice when your kit comes with the laser etched masks, like, like the Edward Profi packs or something. But if it doesn't already come with them, who wants to spend the extra $4? Anyway, this technique is really simple, but it does require practice and a steady hand. So again, what better time to practice? So I decided to brush paint this model. You'll honestly never get as good of a result with brush painting as you can with an airbrush for large areas or for certain effects, but it's still a good skill to have and can be useful in many different applications. So again, what better time to practice than when you've got a model that you are purposely experimenting on? I decided to thin the paint fairly well so I could do four or five coats. Normally I'll do three coats, but I thought a little thinner might reduce brush strokes. Maybe? The first coat is going to look like garbage. It always does. Don't worry about it. Second coat, paint in a different direction. 
I try to never paint in the same direction twice when I'm brush painting a large area. By the third coat, it's not too bad. And my fourth coat and masking video got corrupted! You can see I decided to use electrical tape for the masking. I thought since it's stretchy and bendy it might be a good way to mask off a camo pattern. I mean, again, what better time to give it a shot? So by the way, if you're feeling a measure, a small measure of pity for me having to dig through the garbage can for these things to upgrade my kits, and you'd like to help me out, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'm not going to ask for your money because honestly, if it were me, I wouldn't give me any money. Uh, but just subscribing is a great help. You can also like the video, but I ask that you only press that like button if you actually like it. I'm big into honesty. And if you don't like it, please press the dislike, but again, let me know. As always, if there's something I could do better, well, I'd like to do it better. And finally, why not share the video with a friend? I'm pretty sure that if you don't share it with five people, you'll have bad luck for three years or something like that. Or maybe if you do share it, five people will think you're a putz for three years. Anyway, if you want to support my channel, those are some ways to do it. And I don't think I'll be using electrical tape to mask. Maybe it would have been okay with an airbrush, but it allowed paint to wick underneath, it didn't stick properly, and, I mean, all around it wasn't that great. I think it's far better just to cut out the wavy lines from actual masking tape. And now we know. So I cleaned the worst of the spillover with a little thinner. It won't work a miracle, but it will get some of the dark stuff off to make the touch-ups a little easier. Don't worry if it kind of looks like it's ruining the paint, because, I mean, well you already ruined me, right? Well, you didn't. I did. To do the touch-ups, I'm going to follow panel lines to make it look more natural and cut down on brush strokes. By the way, uh, painting the nose like this is wrong, but it's actually less wrong than painting it red. I also thought the pedo tube looked like a stupid stubby little stump, so I cut it off and I made a new one from a wire. And I decided to glue the propeller on backwards so I could fix it later, of course. You know me. I have to screw something up. And one of my favorite parts is taking the masks off the cockpit. I think I ought to have waited though, but I figured since I was brush painting, it wouldn't matter that much when I put the clear coat on. Anyway, it's hard to see inside with the camera, but 
the detail does come through a little bit better when you're using just your eyeballs, not a camera. Now for the decals. These old Academy decals are the worst. If you've been watching my channel for a bit, then you know that I hate the old Academy decals. The new ones made by Cartograph are great, but the old ones, oh my goodness, they make my blood boil. Anyway, some of you gave me some suggestions for how to deal with the old Academy decals, and that's actually one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to build this kit, so I could try some of these techniques out. So I'm going to start by using white vinegar for one decal, uh, but I kind of forgot and just began using Mr. Mark Setter on all the rest, but at least I got the one. And honestly, the vinegar worked out just about as well as most other decal solutions I've used. I think the Mr. Hobby product was more aggressive and did do a better job adhering the decals to the model, though. Now, to get them to snuggle down. I've gotten three suggestions that I'm going to pit against Mr. Mark Softer in a decal solution battle royale. First up is vinegar with a drop of dish soap to break surface tension. Next is Tamiya acrylic thinner. Next, the reigning champ, Mr. Mark Softer. And finally, isopropyl alcohol. So the vinegar actually spread over the decal very nicely, and I mean, again, it worked about as well as every other decal solution I've tried on old Academy decals, which is to say not at all. The Mr. Mark softer didn't spread very well, and it pooled up, and again, it didn't appear to do much to help the decals actually conform to the shape of the model. The acrylic thinner worked about as well as the Mr. Mark softer. And the alcohol solution worked about as well as the acrylic thinner. So, what to do with these stubborn Academy decals? Well, the only thing I found that gets them to sink onto the model is extra thin glue. It is not a perfect fix, and it can be very dangerous. But it's the only thing aggressive enough to work that I've found. Just understand that it actually melts the decal, so the results can be disastrous if you're not careful. So after fixing the propeller, I wanted to just give it a little light weathering, just a little exhaust smoke and a little gun smoke. And the last thing I wanted to test out was this tester's flat clear coat. I needed one a while ago, so I got the cheapest one I could find to see what would happen. And I won't be using this with a brush ever again. I think it would probably be fine from an airbrush, so we'll give that a go some other time. For now, we'll just use Microscale. And with that, I'm finished. So... This was clearly not the best model I've ever built. Um, I mean, uh, I, I hadn't meant it to be, honestly. I mean, I was looking for something to hone skills, test out some new things and all of that. And I don't know, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's better than the last one I did, so, so that's an improvement. As, as for the kit itself, is this a good kit? <laughs> no. No. Um, I mean... If you're looking for something like super basic or you want something like that's sturdy for, for a toy, 
um, or, or you know, if, if, if you're a beginner, right, and you're looking for, or, or a gift for a beginner, something like that, right? Um, especially if you're going to get this for a youngster. I think this could be fine. I mean, it's basic, and so it's easy to follow the directions and all that, and it's it's okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, again, I mean, I do recommend it for goofing around. If you want to use this as a test bed for some goofy things, um, why, why the heck not? But, um, you know... Uh, I actually, I actually did one for, uh, I, I started building a bunch of goofy ones, uh, uh, like uh, this one here, I'll show you, was a patriotic one I did for a buddy. And I even made a Christmas one with a Santa as a pilot for an ornament once, but, um, well, I gave that to my aunt, and I don't have any pictures, so alas. But I think the patriotic one is pretty cool. If you're looking for a quality kit, though, like one that's going to be like a really outstanding, excellent kit and all of this, um, I mean go buy the airfix kit it's only a few bucks more and the quality is going to be night and day um, also I mean the airfix kits so far I don't know if any of them have the flying tigers uh, decals with you know the Chinese star and all that but uh, um, if you really had to have that then I know trumpeter also makes a 172 scale uh, p40b that has the um, the flying tigers uh, 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 kit decal option so, um, and that one, I haven't built it, but I've seen pictures of it and seen pictures of, like, the kit and stuff and all this. And it looks fine. It looks actually uh, much, much better than this one. Uh, so there you go. So, uh, yeah, anyway, um, those are my thoughts on the, uh, on the thing. I did learn some new stuff, and so that's, that's always good. And as always, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hope you enjoyed all my shenanigans. And, uh, hey, maybe you learned a new trick or two also while you were at it. As always, I wish you joy in your lives, and I hope to see you again soon.